Hello and welcome to the lecture series of data compression. I am Neha Shukla, Assistant Professor, Kite Group of Institutions. Today we are going to discuss about lossless and lossy compression. Before that, we will be discussing about what is data compression, what are the applications of data compression, what all includes, how the data compression has evolved and what all techniques it will be needed. Okay, and then at the end we will be discussing about the lossless and lossy compression. Okay, moving to the contents, we have what is data compression, history of data compression, only a gist of it will be discussed about the Morse codes, lossy compression versus lossless compression. Okay, the first thing is what is data compression. As we can take the example of, because we can learn more with the example rather than giving it in a theory form, we can say like compressing a particular data and you can relate it to, to one simple example when you just go on and search for notes on the online platform what do you get you get a zip file or a rar file which you downloaded and whenever your faculty sends you some data that is also in a zip form you download that zip file and then you extract that particular material from that particular zip file what exactly is that zip file that zip file must have been including all the material you would require and the second thing is that all material could not go at a one go from one part of the country or you can say one part of city to the other part of city via internet in a multiple form. That would require a much larger space on the disk or the drive, whatever platform you are using. So for that matter, what we did, uh, we actually compressed that all files in a particular zip file and then we transferred it. And whenever you get that particular file, you just extract the data from that particular thing. The whole process which included the original files to be zipped into a one single file and that zip file will go on to the other person or the end user and that end user will extract the or, uh, original data from that particular thing. This whole process is actually a process of data compression where the original source code is being in, uh, compressed and then the, it is decompressed or decoded at the end user part. Okay, so this has been the restructuring of the data, how the data, data is restructured by using the compression and then at the end the user will be using it in the original form itself. Okay, so this way we can say that the data has been compressed or it has been compacted in a small size. So the process of modifying, encoding or converting the bit structure of data in such a way that it will require very less space on a disk, that way we can say that it is a data compression and it is also known as source coding or a bit rate reduction how a source coding because as we can take the example of your uh, as you have learnt about the verbal and non-verbal reasoning there you had some questions related to your uh, verbal or non-verbal reasoning that is like the alphabets were arranged in a certain sort of order and the next uh, and the output of that particular thing is also given you have to decode the second word uh, according to the previous technique which you have used so for that matter what we, you do you actually put that particular alphabet into a numeric form and then you try to calculate the logic behind the previous set of words you have used so for that matter that is also a form of source coding like the original letter has been embossed or it has been compressed or it has been coded into a certain form which is not readable by the end user or you can say that it will be converted into a certain form then it becomes usable so for that matter we can say it is a source coding as well and so a very common technique of data compression is like we, we use multiple techniques. There are lossless and lossy type of compression techniques. We use both. It depends upon the work we are doing. Then we can choose about the lossless and the lossy compression. So the major aim if I talk about the data compression that what are the goals of data compression? Why do we need that data compression? We can say that for data compression, the only major aim, the first of all aim is to reduce the size reduce the size on the disk space or the drive or the whatever the platform you are using to reduce the size of that particular data the second thing is to reduce the redundancy among the elements why to reduce the redundancy among the elements because a single element or a single letter is occurring more than once or twice or even 10 times so why to repeat those letters in those 10 times we can reduce that particular thing in a smaller way as well so for that matter what we can say we can compact the size of a very large uh, word into a very small code okay so next thing is the compression predates the digital technology 
so there is one example of morse code what do we, what we did in morse code morse code actually was the very first technique we have invented or it was read morse code it used to happen that two bits were used zeros and ones were used to code the letters in telegram telephony or telegraph you can say other letters which have occurred more frequently are being converted into a numeric form and others are also given a numeric word so that the whole letter will be converted to a dot style product also and a numeric word also so morse code was about the dot codes dash and dots were used to represent a particular letter so it was a compressed form so why, why, why do we do that to just cut off the high frequencies in voice transmission then we have what are the lossless and what are the lossy compression so these two techniques are there which include what the lossless word and the lossy word lossy word in itself explain that the information will be lost at one particular time so some amount of information will be removed or will not be able to retrieve from the decoded one and lossless is there where the input message will always be same as the output message but the compression size will not be much smaller we can say that i hope you have seen the example of while you were giving your exams you had this particular thing that you had to send the pdfs in a smaller size then you used to uh, convert that particular thing into an online uh, data reduction or online compressor pdf compressor or resizer was there so in that you must have seen two uh, kind of thing one is the standard image reduction or a standard pdf resizer and other one was the extended version or a extensive version in the standard version what it has to do it will actually compress your data in a, into a very standard format which, which is already a default format and in extensive what it used to happen the image or the you can say the pdf will always be a little blurred so for that matter we can say that lossy and lossless are two different things lossy will always have well a lossy does not necessarily mean that it will lose the quality but the information a slight amount of information will not be there to retrieve from the original document as you can see there will be slight difference in lossy and lossless okay so what it will be like drop random noise in images background wind music fix spelling errors so we can say that writing is the art of the lossy text compression you can check that out also so we will be now transferring ourselves from lossy and lossless compression what are the differences between the two so we have this image here like the first element is the data elimination how the data elimination is done in lossy and lossless compression so lossy compression eliminates those bytes which are considered as not noticeable like they are not noticeable the very slight random things which can be removed and nobody will notice it so that particular amount of information is lost and lossless will keep even those bytes which are not even useful or not even noticeable restoration process if i talk about the lossy and lossless compression so restoration after lossy compression a file cannot be restored in the original form as i have already told you but in lossless we can restore the original file the quality wise if i go about the lossy compression leads to compromise with the quality as i have told you about the blurred images but no quality degradation will be there for the lossless compression size will be there size lossy compression will give you the best of the size the smallest you want the smallest it will give but it will not be possible in the case of the lossless compression next thing is if i talk about the algorithm we used so we have multiple algorithms in the second and third unit you will have immense amount of numericals also which you will learn how to decode how to encode and how to compress the particular data so algorithms used in, in this particular lossy would be transform coding discrete cosine transform discrete wavelet transform and in this we will be have lzw hoffman coding arithmetic encoding these all are the examples of the algorithm used in this users we can say in audio and video majorly lossy compressions are used because a slight frame is lost nobody will ever notice about the slight frame loss in a particular video but in lossless compression we can go for text and images because if images are blurred or something like that so that will create a very bad effect and text if some lines are missing that will also create a ruckus in this particular form capacity if i talk about lossy compression technique has high data holding capacity because a very large amount or very big size of file can be compressed into very small minute 
disk space also. So lossy compression will have a high data holding capacity and lossless compression will have very low data holding capacity because it will take more time and less amount of data to retrieve and to convert and to compress also. So these all were the examples of how the data compression has evolved, how data compression is working and what are the advantages and disadvantages lossless and lossy compression. I hope you have understand this and we will see what exactly are the models related to it what are the performance measures in the very next videos okay so thank you so much for listening